Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who dwell between the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim, Benjamin and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come and save us. Restore us, O God, cause your face to shine and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry against the prayer of your people? For you have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in great measure. You have made us a strife to our neighbours, and our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts, cause your face to shine, and we shall be saved. You have brought a vine out of Egypt. You have cast out the nations and planted it. You prepared room for it, and caused it to take deep root, and it filled the land. The hills were covered with its shadow, and the mighty cedars with its boughs. You sent out her boughs to the sea, and her branches to the river. Why have you broken down her hedges? So that all who pass by the way pluck her fruit. The boar out of the woods uproots it, and the wild beast of the field devours it. Return, we beseech you, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and see, and visit this vine and the vineyard which your right hand has planted, and the branch that you made strong for yourself. It is burned with fire. It is cut down. They perish at the rebuke of your countenance. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand, upon the son of man whom you made strong for yourself. Then we will not turn back from you. Revive us, and we will call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts, Cause your face to shine, and we shall be saved. My name's Arthur, and I thank you for joining me as we share together Psalm 80, another psalm of Asaph, praying, Lord, restore us. It's a psalm in the first instance for the nation of Israel, speaking about Jacob, Ephraim, Benjamin, Manasseh, Joseph, sons of Israel, and how God brought the nation out of Egypt and establish them in the land, like you would plant a vine, and you put a hedge around it and protect it from the wild animals that would attack and have the fruit from it. The fruit of the vine is joy. But instead, the hedge around has been pulled down, so that the vine has been attacked and uprooted, and God's people have, in reality, for all of their history, been persecuted and oppressed. But the reason this has happened is because they have not faithfully walked in God's way. And Asaph has made this plain in the earlier Psalms, that the Lord must restore his people and forgive their iniquities, not remember their sins against them. But just as God planted Israel in the land in the first instance, so he must restore them. And so this is a prayer, restore us, O God. Cause your face to shine and we shall be saved. The idea that God should show favour on his people rather than turning his face away from them and not listening to them, that he should favour them, that they might be saved, that they might be re-established. They have suffered greatly over the years because God was angry with them because they misrepresented him. And so they have experience the bread of tears, tears that to drink in great measure, suffered much strife among the nations, and the nations have mocked them and laughed at them. Why are so many nations against Israel? It is because Israel is the people of God. But God has not yet intervened because he is giving people an opportunity to repent. But he will act. Just as the nation has prayed Restore us, O God of hosts, cause your face to shine and we shall be saved. It is not a prayer in vain. God has promised he will do just that for his people. We know that he did it in the past when he established them in the first place. That was in fulfilment to the promise God gave Abraham. But God's promise has not been fully fulfilled. And so so the psalm 
and the nation even today are looking forward to the full fulfilment of it. But at the present time, Israel is in great strife. Before the Christian era, at the hands of the Babylonians, they suffered greatly. At the hand of the Persians, Haman sought to destroy them. In the Greek period, they were in the sandwich between the fighting of Egypt versus the king of the north, the Syrians, the Seleucids versus the Ptolemies, as described prophetically in Daniel chapter 11. The armies marched backwards and forwards through the land of Israel. It has been that way through history. And in the present time, since the destruction of Jerusalem by the Romans, the children of Israel have not been at peace, but they have suffered. They have been hunted from one place to another. They have fled from here to there, from there to somewhere else. But God has preserved them because of the word of God which they have in their hands. And it is because of prayers like this that give them hope when there seems to be no hope. It describes accurately the vineyard which your right hand has planted. The branch that you made strong for yourself, it is burned with fire. It is cut down. They perish at the rebuke of your countenance. So God has looked away from his people and they have suffered as a consequence. But what will be the blessing to them when God's face again shines forth on them? Revive us, and we will call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Cause your face to shine, and we shall be saved. Since the image of Israel being the Lord's vineyard was such a strong image in the Old Testament, Jesus used it in the following story. He said, Hear another parable. There was a certain landowner who planted a vineyard and set a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it and built a tower. And he leased it to vine dressers and went into a far country. Now when vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the vine dressers that they might receive its fruit. And the vine dressers took his servants, beat one, killed one and stoned another. Again he sent other servants, more than the first, and they did likewise to them. Then last of all he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the vine dressers saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and seize his inheritance. So they took him and cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those vine dressers? They said to him, He will destroy those wicked men miserably and lease his vineyard to other vine dressers who will render to him the fruits in their seasons. And Jesus said to them, Have you never read the scriptures? The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvellous in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a nation bearing the fruits of it. And whoever falls on this stone will be broken but on whomever it falls, it will grind him to powder. Now when the chief priests and Pharisees heard his parables, they perceived that he was speaking of them, and when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitudes, because they took him for a prophet. So the nation of Israel is the vineyard of God, and the vine dressers were the leaders of the nation, and they were to lead the people in godly living. But no, they rejected Jesus as their Messiah. They sought to kill him, and indeed they handed him over to the Romans for exactly that purpose. But the Lord will come and destroy those wicked men miserably and lease his vineyard to other vine dressers who will render to him the fruits in their season. So at this present time, God is blessing the world with his word through other vine dressers, not the nation of Israel, although he preserves them, but they are not his ministers of the truth of the scripture to the world. But if you're a believer in the Lord Jesus, you are. For Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing.